So in this video, I'll go over a practical explanation of what our pointers in Golang are and why and when you'd want to use them. They are pretty simple to understand after you grasp the concept of memory allocation and how the computer stores and retrieves your data. So in Go, when you declare a variable, you are creating a box in memory. In other words, the variable takes place in that memory and the value of the variable is the contents of that box. Now, the way the computer knows where that specific box is located in the memory is by using an address. You can imagine there would be a lot more variables here. So how do we know where this specific variable is? It's by using an address. So that way the computer can quickly access the variable we want in the pile of many other boxes. Now, if we take a step back, let's think about the memory has an unordered shelf with many other boxes in it, as this example shows. So each box has a number and that number is the address of that box. And whenever we want to access a specific variable, we just need to know where the address of that box is. So in practical terms, what this means is that if I create a variable and I assign it to 42, then I can just print the variable. But if I want to access its memory location, I can just use this operator and we get the address. Let's try it out. Let's go run my not go. And we get the value and the address of that variable. So what would happen if we had a variable, another one, pointing to the same location of the other variable, so pointing to its pointer? In theory, they should point to the same box in the memory, right? And they do, as you can see here. Now, what would happen if we change the value of the original box and print the location of the second box, so the one that is pointing to this one? So they are printing to the same location, even though the value changed. Now, the value of the box changed, but the address is still the same. And this is how we can actually access the value of the box through the pointer operator. So let's check this out. And here we can see that the value of the another user ID actually changed without us changing its value directly. By changing the original value, we changed this variable without even changing it. This is because they are pointing to the same box. Since that we're talking about it, the star operator is also used to declare a type pointer. So here we have a variable age, which its type it's a pointer to an integer. Now, if we print the age, what we're gonna have, it's a nil pointer because the value doesn't have anything. So let's check that out. And as you can see, this is the value of a nil pointer. If we want to assign a value to it, what we need to do is use the other operator that we have seen. So here we are assigning the age to a value. So now if we print the actual age, we're going to have an address to some box. So as you can see, we went from the nil pointer to some pointer. Now if we print the value of the actual age, so here we are differencing the pointer to get the value for that box because age is a pointer. And here we get the 100s. By the way, you can also create pointers using the new keyword. So here, if you check the type, it's a pointer to integer. And we can also do stuff like this. So all of that is very interesting. But in the real world, you're probably creating functions. And of course, you can also pass pointers to those functions. And for example, this function, what it does, it receives a pointer and a two integer. So what would do here is that we are changing the value of that pointer to a new value. So what would happen if we printed the age now? So the value of the box actually changed to 42, which is the value that we passed in. So as you can see, you can mutate values by passing a reference. And to demonstrate that here, I have created another function that does the same thing, but it doesn't receive a pointer. And if we update this to 69, we can see that it actually didn't update it because we are creating a new variable instance whenever we pass an argument. So what is actually happening here, if we think about it, is that we are assigning this variable to a value and then discarding it at the end of the function. So nothing is happening really. So with that basic examples out of the way, let's take a look at something more concrete that you do in the real world. So here I have a user struct and here I'm creating a user. Now let's say that we want to create a function or a method to mutate this username. 
So you'd create a method like this. So here we have an extension of the user called update username. It receives a name and then it updates the user dot name to that name. Now, if you have learned from the previous example, you'd know that here we are not passing a pointed reference. So doing this operation would actually not do anything. So let's actually try that out. So as you can see, although we updated this user to Tiago, we can also see that the original name is still Goofer. So to solve this problem, there are at least two ways that you can solve this. The first one is a very simple example, which is to create another function. So this function here is nothing more, nothing less than the syntactic sugar of this example. If we want to change the username, what you could actually do is either return a new user, so an updated user here, and then here below, we need to pass in the actual initial user and the new name. And if we print this out, we actually get the updated value. But most probably what you would be doing is that you'd be passing a pointer reference as the user. And if you do this and you go back to the other example, where we are updating like so, then if we print, we actually get this value updated. That is because the method is receiving a pointer to user, which again, all of that is syntactic sugar for this function here. It is important to note that whenever you pass a struct to a function without a pointer, a temporary copy of the whole struct is created in memory. So if you just want to change the original value of a variable, passing a pointer here might be best. Before diving into when we should actually use pointers or not, I want to touch on something really quick. From what I have just said before, you might be wondering that using pointers is always faster than passing by reference, but the Go compiler has a feature called Escape Analysis, which the gist of it is that to better handle memory allocation, Go determines whether a variable is in a function should be allocated on a stack or on the heap. It checks if a variable reference escapes the function, meaning it's accessed outside of the function scope. If it doesn't escape, the variable can be allocated on a stack for fast access, otherwise it's allocated on the heap. And I'm saying this because the moment you reference a pointer to something and move it beyond the function scope, for example, by passing a reference to another function or having a pointer receiver, the Go compiler is moving the data to the heap and accessing the data from the heap rather than from the stack can be way, way slower. Now, I wouldn't worry much about that if we're not building performance critical applications where each millisecond is precious. So just to showcase you what I was saying, here I have a, a create pointer function which returns a pointer. And here I have a local variable declared x and here we are returning a pointer to x, meaning it's used outside of the function example. So the compiler allocates x on the heap to ensure that the memory is preserved beyond the function scope. So when should you use pointers? when you want to mutate state or when you want to avoid copying the data around. Now that list is very simple and minimalist and whenever it comes down to decisions in Golang, I like to search from the best and here is an article from Google outlining the decisions that they use when using Go. So this is a style guide sheet and here they explain some edge cases and examples that you might or might not want to use a pointer. And from the get go, we get this quote here, correctness wins over speed and simplicity. So there are cases where you must use a pointer or not, but you should also make good sense of how the code will grow and use plain simple values for all the data. Outlining some of the items below, if the receiver is a size and the method doesn't require a resize or reallocating the size, use a value rather than a pointer. So in this example here we have a buffer type and on this function we are not doing any operation on this buffer so not changing it so it's fine to use a reference here so it's fine to not use a pointer here however if the method needs to mutate the receiver a receiver must be a pointer here we have a counter an integer and we are incrementing that integer with a pointer it's also important to know that if the receiver is a struct containing fields that cannot be safely copied, use a pointer receiver. And a common example is the sync mutex. And here we have a struct with the mutex and we are using it as a pointer. And if we scroll a bit down, here we have a very important section. So when in doubt, always use a pointer receiver. That's said from the article and has a general guideline. Prefer to make the methods for a type either all pointers 
or value method. So consistency always wins over uh, these edge cases. Now, I really like this quote here. This is something that I have spoken about this gap analysis. The compiler can choose to pass pointers to values on the stack as well as copying the values on the stack, but these considerations should not outweigh the readability and correctness of the code in most circumstances. When performance does not matter, it is important to profile both approaches with a realistic benchmark before deciding that one approach outperforms the other one. And to finish it all off, hopefully now you have learned more about pointers and improved your judgment when to use them. So if you like this video, consider leaving a thumbs up and consider subscribing as well. I'll leave in the description below all of these links and on the description as well is the link to my Discord community where if you want to level up your Golang skills, you have a community of experienced programmers there.